Researchers just revealed how to use humanoid robots to grow human tendon tissue. Advanced medical robots can conduct tasks ranging from room disinfection to surgery. According to a story published on Friday by Medical Express, a team of researchers from the University of Oxford and the robotics company Devonthro have created a robot shoulder that can operate as a stretching mechanism to produce lifelike human tendon tissue. The new device is essentially a bioreactor for the growth of human tissue. So in today's video, we'll discuss how researchers just revealed how to use humanoid robots to grow human tendon tissue. Interested in learning more? So keep an eye on the footage. Hello everyone! Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video and click the notification bell button to stay up to speed on world politics, finance and the international market, space and anything else in the world of technology. For years, researchers all over the world have battled to generate human tendon tissue with the proper elasticity for usage in human patients. Researchers have attempted to boost elasticity by creating devices that stretch and bend the tissue as it grows to tackle this challenge. Unfortunately, these efforts have not succeeded in producing tissue that can twist and stretch in the same way as genuine tissue can. As a result, this group devised a novel method for this difficult task. They did away with the traditional approach of culturing tendon tissue in boxes with pulley symptoms. Instead, the researchers chose to grow it in a manner that closely resembles that of a person. To accomplish so, they devised a fabricated joint modeled after a human shoulder and made from a modified open source robot developed by Devanthro engineers. This technology allowed for the inclusion of a bioreactor, as well as a way to attach additional tissue as it developed. The team deliberately put a bioreactor and hair like filaments on the robot's shoulder and then flooded vital places with nutrients to promote growth. Following that, the cells were allowed a two week period to mature. The shoulder would be engaged for 30 minutes each day throughout that period by being bent and twisted in human-like ways. The end outcome was a tissue that looked nothing like tissue developed in a static system. Is this new tissue growing process, however, a genuine advance over the old? According to the researchers, more research is needed to determine this. However, if they are successful in producing human-like tissue, the possibilities are endless. The strategy isn't altogether novel. It's actually from more than two years ago. In 2018, researchers from the University of Tokyo unveiled a novel biohybrid robot that combined living tissue with robotics, combining biohybrid robotics with living muscle tissue generated from rat cells. Should the technology be copied and recreated with human tissue, the biohybrid robot might be used to replace missing appendages on humans in the future, as well as to develop far more complex and lifelike robots. Is a new era dawning in which machines and humans, or at least sections of them, merge? Only time will tell if this is true. Robotic bioreactor devices have aided the growth of tissue-engineered structures through mechanical stimulation for more than 20 years. However, we have yet to generate viable grafts that can be used in clinical settings. Humanoid robots have the potential to provide physiologically equivalent mechanical stimulation to grafts and implants, thereby speeding up their clinical adoption. We created a flexible bioreactor chamber that can be mounted to a modified musculoskeletal MSK humanoid robot shoulder joint to test the feasibility of a humanoid bioreactor. We show that fibroblast cells can be cultivated in this compartment while the robotic arm is experiencing physiological adduction-abduction. After 14 days, a preliminary analysis of the cell's transcriptomy revealed a clear influence of the loading regime on the gene expression profile. These first findings will help researchers investigate MSK humanoid robots as a more biomechanically realistic platform for tissue engineering and biomaterial testing. As part of the tissue graft research, a humanoid robot was employed to assist in the growth of human tendon tissue. Engineers from Germany and Switzerland collaborated with the University of Oxford scientists to grow synthetic tissues on a robotic shoulder joint. The movement of the shoulder, which was placed within a flexible bioreactor, helped stimulate growth and increase the performance of human tendon tissue. For a long time now, researchers have proven that external mechanical stimulation is critical for properly maturing the tissue and having the cells produce the right type of genes, said Pierre Muthui of the Botnar Institute at the University of Oxford. The discoveries could aid in the development of more realistic and advanced humanoid robots while also enhancing the production and quality of tissue grafts for patients. Raphael Hotsettler developed the robotic technology employed in the tests, with the ultimate goal of creating bio-inspired humanoid robotic bodies that can one day work exactly like a human body. 
Mr. Hot Settler explained, We attempt to emulate the way the human body operates because we believe it will help us design robots that move as smoothly and gracefully as human beings do. They'll be utilized in research, neuroscience, biomechanics, and other areas, but they might also be employed to improve prosthetics and test novel implants in the future. After successfully validating the system's ability to produce human tissue, the next step is to see if this robotics technology can be utilized to grow better tendons for clinically useful grafts. Professor Muthui stated, This has been years of work, and now that we've proved that this strategy is practical, I think the fun only begins now. The possibility of generating tendons strong enough to transplant is being examined using robotic skeletons that look and move like real humans. Tissue produced on a humanoid robot could be one day grafted onto a real person, repairing damages in their tendons, if the proof of concept can be perfected with more research. Today, the surgeons can attempt to heal tendons by grafting a graft from another tendon in the body. Although the results are variable, alternative options, such as artificially designing tendons for transplantation, have been investigated by scientists for more than two decades. However, growing new tendons from an individual's cells outside of the body is a difficult task. It's currently carried out in small bioreactor chambers that mimic joint conditions. Although data suggests that dynamic movement, such as stretching and flexing, is important for tendon growth, even the most advanced bioreactors fall short of simulating the range and amplitude of movements expected of tendons. As a result, the issue might not be up to the task at hand. Robots may be able to assist in resolving this issue by effectively breaking in the tendons for humans. So far, only a simple robotic shoulder joint has been used to demonstrate the concept. Human cells produced from a shoulder tendon, on the other hand, proliferated quicker in a flexible bioreactor chamber that could bend and stretch with a robot's arm than in a static environment. Different genes were also expressed by the cells. Mechanical stress, such as tension, compression, and torsion, occurs naturally as human tendons grow. So it stands to reason that comparable movements could aid the growth of synthetic equivalents as well. Tendons are the connective tissue that connects our muscles to our bones, thus they must be both strong and flexible. Tendons that are not subjected to tensile tension quickly degenerates. The very makeup begins to dissolve. The human shoulder's tendons are particularly active because the joint has the highest range of motion in the human body. Tendons are working overtime to keep the ball and sockets in place. The supraspinatus muscle and tendon connect the shoulder blade to the humerus, the arm's humerus. It is primarily responsible for assisting the arm flap from a person's side upwards. Researchers were able to mechanically manipulate cells from the supraspinatus tendon by growing them in a flexible bioreactor and then attaching it to a robotic shoulder based on human anatomy. The repetitive flapping motions, known as arm abduction and adduction, appear to provide some flexibility and strength to developing tissue, reducing stiffness. The force of the robotic motions alter the proliferation of human cells after 14 days. Flexible bioreactors, when coupled to humanoid robots, appear to be more realistic platforms for engineering tendons, according to the proof of concept. However, there is still a lot of testing to be done. Researchers want to learn more about the best bioreactor materials to utilize, which cell types respond best to pushes and pull, and which robotic movements are optimal for growing human tissue. Potential long-term benefits of a humanoid bioreactor-based method include the manufacture of functioning tissue grafts for patients, the development of a better in vitro culture for preclinical work, and the ability to support the development of advanced robotic systems, says the study. Having said that, as we near the finish of this video, we'd like to thank you all for sticking with us. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button. Most importantly, if you want to be kept up to date on anything relating to space and the internet, you should subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon. Looking forward to seeing you at the next one. Until then, peace.